Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is Wonder Chrissy here. How you doing? Today's number one. First day of the year, folks. First day of the year. Mm. Coffee is hot. It is snowing, sleeting, and raining here in the Midwest. Ah, what a way to start the year. Got my trusty White Sox hat on today. Yeah, right out of the 70s. Right out of the 70s. And today we're going to talk about uh, the Rose Bowl. There was no Rose Bowl parade today. It's kind of upset folks that normally like to catch up on that. It's a hell of a parade. Hell of a parade, and uh, being from Big Ten country, um, until recently, was always a Big Ten team that participated in that Rose Bowl game every year. And I, I believe our Wildcats, many, many years ago, made an appearance in the Rose Bowl. I'm not sure that they won, but um, they did play in the Rose Bowl. Oh, geez, I forget what year, but uh, they did. They did. I checked the history on that. It's probably true. Let me fix my mic a little bit here. So, uh, so yeah, so today we're going to talk about the Rose Bowl and um, my connection. I am connected yeah, if you go wonder, think about that. I am actually connected to the Rose Bowl. I am connected. Oh, my camera's not wanting to work now for some reason. Why is that? I guess we'll just go with the two camera that I two cameras that I have. So um So yeah, so yeah, so um So let's get let's talk about the Rose Bowl and my connection to the Rose Bowl. My first job out of college, I worked for a company by the name of Rand McNally in um, the northern uh, suburbs of Chicago, right on the edge of Chicago proper in Skokie. And um, at the time I was working there, I was uh, working under the fourth generation of the family to run that company and it kind of had a little oh a little tradition um i guess the first son that was born for every every generation was called andrew so the co-founding person of Rand McNally that that started Rand McNally with um, with uh, the the Rand guy. There was two guys. One was McNally, and his name was Andrew, and the other was uh, Rand. And I, I don't know his first name, but um, there was two guys in the late 1800s, like 1880 something, that started Rand McNally. And every generation after that, they created a new Andrew McNally. So when I, by the time I was working for Rand McNally in the mid 18 or 1980s, excuse me, 1980s, I was working for Andrew McNally, the fourth, fourth generation owner of Rand McNally. And if you don't know, they were, uh, still are, I guess. Um, well-known map and printing company. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but um, private company, no shareholders, all owned for like, man, if you, I have another video, I'll add the video below. I did a more formal video on maps and I covered the history of Rand McNally, which turned out to be a 140-year-old company, which was 
pretty much entirely owned by um, the, the family, the, the McNally family. And um, they fell on some uh, hard times. Uh, we'll talk about that too, what really caused the final demise of Rand McNally. But you can still buy, um, you can still buy, by Rand McNally Atlas, and they were known for their atlases and maps, and they dabbled in children's books. And um, one of their big money makers too was they printed a banker's almanac or banker's directory that, um, you know, prior to the in the internet, that uh, these uh, it was a nice bound book that had. Uh, information about every bank in the United States and maybe even North America and um, they sent that out oh quarterly or if not uh, you know twice a year to all the banks that were part of uh, some group so um, they were responsible for old-fashioned printing so they were uh, cart cartography cartography people and printers and um, and that was my first job out of college. I was a programmer at their headquarters in Skokie, Illinois, and was doing some um, IT work for printing of something known as check letters. So um, they had a relationship with several large banks, and they would take data from those companies and they would send out those requests or letters with the uh, checks on the side. So like if you were a uh, you know, credit card holder from a certain bank, they would uh, take all your information, including your account number with that bank, and create a check that you could just write yourself a check and have it deposited into your bank and it would be charged against your credit card. That's how that worked. So I spent oh, two and a half years working for Rand McNally. And um, during those years, they had a hallway on the first floor of this, this uh, corporate headquarters. And on that hallway was a picture of all their floats that they, they subsidized to the Rose Bowl Parade. So they had at least 10 or 15 portraits, huge color photographs, nicely framed in this hallway that uh, sh uh, showed the float that they funded for those years um, as part of the Rose Bowl Parade. So, um, so here we had a I guess it was a large company, but no one really knows knew how big a revenue it generated because it was a private company. Um, and, and the connection to Pasadena, as I went back and I looked, was the original founder of Rand McNally um, lived in the Pasadena area. That's where he he lived. Even though I believe the company started in New York City or the first map that they generated was uh, out of New York City. But um, he lived in uh, Pasadena and they still have a house that uh, a historical house that's uh, been bought and sold recently um, through the years called the McNally House. So obviously he was a big supporter of the Pasadena area. And his uh, heirs and years to come took that serious and um, put up some floats in the Pasadena Rose Bowl Parade for many years. And uh, as being a, an employee of that company, man, I kind of scratched my head at the time. I was like, why are, we, why are we spending all this money on a float in the Rose Bowl Parade? But I guess it was good PR and... Um, I didn't realize how it linked into the company, but now as I go back and start looking and hit researching this, I'm, I'm finding out there is a connection between the original founder of Ram McNally, Andrew McNally the first, and uh, Pasadena. So um, there you have it. 
there is my connection to the Rose Bowl. So as an employee, man, we would we would look at that picture, those pictures all the time. And, um, you know, we're proud of the fact that our company supported the Rose Bowl and we could watch it on TV. I remember the years that I worked there, I would make special note to catch the Rose Bowl parade and to see the float that they supported and had built. So um, there you go. There you go. So I also link, I, I did, a, like I said, I did a video on Rand McNally and the whole history and their demise. Um, they, they're still operating today in some way, shape, or form. Exactly what form, I'm not sure. But there is still a company out there called Rand McNally. It is no longer owned by the McNally family um, as they went through uh, bankruptcy and sale to, you know, it, it's been sold to two or three companies in the last uh, 10 years. So um, it is, is most likely a part of another company at this point. But um, what people don't realize, you know, they started out in maps. And when I was working for them in, um, in the 80s, um, the part of the company that was growing the most was the map cup map part of it. They uh, back in the eighties, mid to eight, late eighties, people were still using uh, paper maps. There was no navigation for cars and and what have you. So they were they were buying up um, regional map companies left and right. And they started the um, another company where they would go out to gas stations and mini marts and uh, stock racks by the cash registers of uh, of these stores that had uh, had maps for the local area, the state, what have you. That people that were traveling and uh, buying some gas or. Buying a sandwich in a mini mart uh, connected to a gas station would want to buy a map. So uh, that was a booming business, if you can believe it or not, in the mid to late 80s. Maps were the rage. Everyone had a map. Everyone had an almanac in their car. And um, that was the way of life back then. So if you didn't know how to read a map, you were lost. You were lost. There was no navigation. So um, that was a big money maker for the company, but the real money maker, which a lot of people don't realize, was Rand McNally printed all the airline ticket stock for the federal government. That is where they made their bread and butter, and that's what kept the company running for many years. So... The demise, for the most part, was as a result of airlines going to e-tickets. So when that happened, the need for Rand McNally and their printed paper stock for tickets and um, distribution of those to travel agents. Remember travel agents? Yeah, that's... Back then, travel agents were a big thing, big thing. If you wanted to buy a airline ticket, you had to go to a travel agent. And Rand McNally supplied the blank ticket stock, which was, you know, they had serial numbers on it and um, all the important stuff. It was probably like a five-part piece of printed stock that had to be created or was carbon copies and who knows what. But anyway, those were just like money. So Rand McNally printed all those airline ticket stock and kept track. They had a system that kept track of who had what numbers or serial numbers and um, and how much stock they had on hand. So um, because it was like, literally, it was like uh, money. 
if you knew how to fill it out properly. Um, they kept a, a tight control over those tickets and uh, wouldn't send you new ones unless you really, really, really needed them. And if you had a lot on hand and they couldn't account for it, well, then there was a problem. So, um, yeah, much like the problem when, like I said, when the airlines went to the electronic tickets, there was not much of a need for paper tickets any longer. So um, that spelled the demise of the Rand McNally Company as I knew it in the mid to late 80s. So there you have it. There you have it. Why Rand McNally went bankrupt, I guess. Um, so, so um, yeah, yeah, there, were, there was no need for maps. There was no need for paper airline tickets. Thus, and, and there was no need for the banker's directory anymore once the internet came out in like, what, 1990 something? I've got the facts written down somewhere. I can't seem to find them right now, but um, that also nailed the, you know, nailed the coffin for Rand McNally. There was no need to publish a banker's directory anymore if it could be made available online to everyone and updated daily, weekly, monthly, however often you wanted to update it. So the, you know, the printing business evolved, evolved. Um, to this day, I know some people that were heavily involved in the printing business, and they they say, you know, with the internet and everything, everything going online, there's less and less printed paper stock being produced worldwide. So, um, you know, printing printing is almost becoming a niche business at this point. A lot of things that you, you know, you used to, need printed like an application for a credit card or an application for this or that application for colleges applications for that are all online now so you don't need to print them no need to print them no need to create them no need to stock them and store them and and all that good stuff so um yeah, there's been massive change in the last 20, 25 years within the printed printing business. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what sealed the coffin for Rand McNally. The business kind of shrunk away. So um, I couldn't find out how many years they had a, a float in the Rose Bowl parade, but it was at least 10 to 15, if not more. Um as I said, they had a special hallway in the corporate headquarters, and they had a picture of every year, and it just went on and on down the hallway. Actually, I think on both sides of the hallway. So anyone visiting from uh, the company from the outside could uh, get a look at what they were sponsoring uh, from the Rose Bowl parade. So, and there's there wasn't a lot of sponsors, so... It was kind of, um, you know, kind of, kind of a, a special deal, a big deal to be included in the Rose Bowl Parade. So, um, and they did it for several years, many years. So, and they, like I said, they were just a family-run company at the time. So, um, there you go. My connection to the Rose Bowl. And I was a little bit sad, too, today when we didn't get a chance to see an actual parade. But um, what NBC provided, the whole historical and background of the Rose Bowl, I think I enjoyed that much more. It was nice to see, you know, what the Rose Bowl is all about. It's more than just a parade. It's more than just a football game. Um it, it, it's about other things. It's about community. It's about helping other people. And um, it is a, it's a huge endeavor that um, the city of Pasadena and the Terminant of Rose Bowl organization, um, I think it's called the Tournament of Roses Special Organization Membership, I think, Membership uh, Organization. So um, not anyone can join, but uh, 
hundreds of volunteers every year to help getting the parade and all the festivities off and uh, of course to the building of the floats i have never been to see the floats in person but the folks i have talked to that have seen them say that it is an awesome experience and uh, one that uh, you will never forget so um, kudos to the rose bowl and um, that is my connection to the rose bowl so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little story today. And um, this is Wonder Chrissy, and uh, I will I will link uh, put a link below in the description about my other video where I talk more in depth about the history of Rand McNally and maps. So you can look at that and get a little more background into the company. My first job out of college was at Rand McNally. So there you have it. There you have it. We are Land Cruiser Midwest. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, give our channel a look. We've got a little bit of everything out there. We've got some adventure. We've got some dining and restaurant reviews. We have some how-tos. We have some podcasts. We just did a beer extravaganza last night with uh, myself and um, Sassy Sue, my partner. So um, check that out. There's about a 30, 40 minute podcast. We've been doing podcasts for like 25 days straight. And uh, yeah, it was called the Podmas series. So podcasting for Christmas is Podmas. We tried to have a little fun with that and um, thought I'd get on today and and um, do one about my connection with the Rose Bowl Parade and um, and how it, it is part of me and how we are connected. So um, there you go. There you go. I hope you're having a good first day of 2021 and uh, looking forward to what the new year brings us it's gonna be it's gonna be oh it's gonna be who knows folks but get ready for anything and we will be here to help you through the process because and no one knows where we're headed but it's gonna be an adventure and as i said we are all about adventure and excitement and exploration here so it's going to be a year made for us that's for sure so um yeah i think at, at this point i'm gonna close it up close the shop and if you've ever watched our show before you know how we end it we um simply reach out and turn the camera out in a sweet one, two, three method. Um, Want to give a shout out to the Wildcats. I don't know if they played their game yet. Let's take a look here before we should close it down. They were in the Citrus Bowl today. Let's see if we got a score. Do we have a score? Do we have a score? Oh. Let's see. Getting a lot of marketing stuff, but I'm not getting a score in today's game. It started at 1 p.m. Oh. Let's see. They're saying it should have been a high scoring game, but let me check the sports pages. We'll get a better feel for what's going on. Should have went there in the first place. You can never trust the media and the newspaper. Let's look at NCAA football. And uh, it is 14-13 in the third quarter with Northwestern leading 14-13 in the third quarter, halfway through. So there you have it. Low scoring game. Uh, I think they were predicting a higher scoring game than that. They still have a quarter and a half to go. 
So it's Northwestern leading by uh, just a little bit. So uh, hopefully if they win, they won't be like Wisconsin. And uh, I don't know if you saw that. They got the trophy and someone dropped it and it shattered into 5,000 pieces. Check that out on the internet if you can find it. I wonder if they had another one made. I do not know. Usually those are one of the kind type of things, but boy, I bet you whoever let that slip out of their hands and break was really upset. But um, there you go. And um, yeah, and, and check out there. There's so many bowls. They even had a mayo bowl this year. If you can believe that, we've got the Chick-fil-A bowl. And also now this year we had the Mayo Bowl. I'm not sure. I think that was in North Carolina. I'm not sure why we need a Mayo Bowl, but um, there was a Mayo Bowl this year. So there you go. A little bit of useless Seinfeld message for you guys today. Enjoy the Mayo Bowl. And we're going to be over and out. One, two, three. Click. And we are done for today.